Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Drone. Today we have the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. We're going to get it out of the box, get it set up and ready for flight. I'm pretty excited, so let's check it out. So first of all, the DJI Phantom 4 Pro comes in this uh, kind of styrofoam case, almost feels like a cooler, much like the DJI Phantom 4. Uh, I have my Phantom 4 sitting over here on the table uh, for comparison's sake. We're not going to do a lot of comparisons, just some really basic stuff, but um, I've opened this out of the cardboard. It has this little uh, handle here, and it's pretty nicely packed in there. And this is something you could use as a as a case to carry it around. Um, it's fairly sturdy. I still have my one for the Phantom 4. Um, and as you can see, the Phantom 4 Pro looks an awful lot like a Phantom 4. This one uh, feels pretty lightweight. Of course, there's no battery in it right now. Um, the remote control has the screen built into it. So that's something that as you pop it out, you can see the screen right there. I'm assuming there's no Wi-Fi or actually there's no, there's probably Wi-Fi, but there's probably no cellular uh, service for this thing. Uh, and I was using a phone and an iPad with cell service, so I'm curious to see how that works, but it's probably done over Wi-Fi. But I'm sure you need to do your setup in a place that has Wi-Fi so that you can get everything updated and ready to roll before your first flight. So there's that. Um, and then of course it comes with propellers, a spare set of propellers, uh, the appropriate cables that you need. Um, it's got, let's see what else, it's got a uh, USB cable in there. It's got the directions, which um, I will definitely take a look at uh, to, if, as I get stumped on things here to see what's going on. And that's it. So let's get this box out of the way. And take a look. So the first question I'm sure everybody's going to want to know is how does it compare to the DJI Phantom 4? Um, here is the two of them side by side. It looks like it's pretty much the same size in terms of the um, airframe. It uh, looks like it's very close or exactly the same height and so I think they used a lot of the same components and the chassis. I know the motors are a little bit different and I know the batteries are slightly different, and I know the cameras are different, and I know this one has more sensors. That's all I'm going to say for now as far as comparison goes. We'll do a separate comparison a video of the two, but just know that the form factor is, uh, if not identical, very, very close. And therefore, I would think if you had accessories or a case for this, for your old Phantom 4, you could probably put your Phantom 4 Pro in it. That's my intention, actually, is to put my Phantom 4 Pro into a hard case that I have for this guy. So let's move the old one out of the way. The other thing I wanted to mention that is a comparison point is the batteries. Um, they are both 4S batteries. They are both the same size. And I did try putting the new DJI Phantom 4 Pro battery into the DJI Phantom 4 and it worked. It turned on without any trouble. Now the difference is the milliamp hours. Um, they're both 15.2 4S volt batteries, but the original Phantom 4 battery is a 5350 milliamp hour and this new one is a 5870 milliamp hour. Milliamp hours basically are how long the thing will fly for. It's like a tank of gas and the higher the milliamp hour the bigger the tank. So you should get more flight time with the new battery. Uh, I did contact DJI uh, support actually on their website. I went in and clicked on the support button and chatted with somebody. They said they don't recommend putting the uh, using the batteries across platform, but I've also seen a lot of forums that say, and people saying they've done it and there's no issue with it. So um, I'm going to do a little more investigation in that, but just know for now that they do fit um, each quad and at the very least you'll want to make sure you keep them separated if you have both uh, types of batteries. So there they are. We of course have the battery charger. It's uh, similar to the one that came with the Phantom 4 Pro. It has both the uh, connection to plug into the battery and the connection to plug into the remote control, as you can see here. And uh, I've been told, and I've read in the original Phantom 4 uh, manual, that you aren't supposed to charge them both at the same time. It can overheat this um, as you're charging both of them at once. So you want to do them one at a time, but they build it into a single cable so that it's one less thing to manage. Now the other piece is propellers. 
This is a propeller from my original Phantom 4, and I'm curious to see if it fits on the new Phantom 4 Pro, and guess what? It does. So it looks like the propellers are cross-compatible, which is great because if you own a bunch of these uh, already and you're upgrading, then you don't have to worry about getting a new one. So the first thing you're going to need to do, of course, is charge up your batteries, um, your controller, and this one, this controller has the screen built in. It folds down nicely and fits right into the case, otherwise it looks very similar to the other Phantom 4 controller. Um, this is supposed to be a very bright screen. I actually haven't turned it on yet, so I haven't seen it. So let's do that now. So that tells me I have a full battery. So I'm going to push it once and then push it again, and it's going to turn on. And you get that cool little animation on the top. I'm assuming that it's booting up. And I'm going to pick English. Hit start. Next. The user agreement. Very lengthy document. Agree. I'm going to plug into our Wi Fi network here. Let's see. Okay. So um, that's great. It finally did it. The uh, way you enter your email address and all of your information is quite confusing because I couldn't get rid of the, uh, I'm assuming they're Mandarin or Chinese characters on the screen. Um, so just be aware of that. You have to use the little enter arrow after you click on some of your um, uh, letters to actually get them to take. Otherwise it converts it to Chinese. All right, so um, here's where we are right now. Enter device. All right, no signal. So this is the correct battery. It is charged. So we're going to go ahead and put it in. No propellers. Take this off. And turn on the Phantom. Let's see if it recognizes it. And I should probably take the... Um, gimbal guard off. So it's not fighting with the camera. Hmm. So it's been a good minute and I'm still getting no signal on my screen here. And these lights are flashing red and yellow, which I don't think is a good thing. So I'm going to uh, shut down for a moment, check the manual, and come back to this and see what happens. So I logged into my DJI account, and when I turned on the Phantom, it uh, didn't see it right away. Um, but I'm gonna, I just turned everything off and I'm going to restart. So restarting the controller. Alright, so that's coming on. Now I'm going to restart the quad itself. And see what happens. And there it is. It says Phantom 4 connected. So go fly. says that I have the latest firmware and uh, everything is showing normal and good over on the side so that's a good sign so we're going to close out of this and there is our live shot of the camera you can see it swinging around hello camera doesn't like that um, so there you go it says uh, magnetic interference fly with caution 
which is understandable because we're inside. But um, everything's connected and it looks like we're ready to go take our first flight. So let's do that. Hey everybody, so we got this thing set up this morning. Uh, went through and set up the, the software on the screen. By, by that I mean DJI Go. Logged in to my uh, DJI Go account and uh, the remote is now talking to the quad. So we're gonna take it out for the very first flight. As I said, this is not a uh, review. It's really just kind of a first flight to see how it does and see what it's like. We will be doing a review later as well as a comparison to the um, DJI Phantom 4. So let me go ahead and uh, set this guy down and power it on and let's see what happens. So the remote is uh, booting up. I've got the software there that you can see the DJI logo and it says connected to the Phantom 4 Pro. And um, I'm looking at the brightness on this screen and it is pretty good outside. I haven't adjusted anything in terms of brightness or anything like that. Um, we will have to do a separate video about um, all of this. Yeah, look, there's Wi-Fi, light bridge, just a lot of different, um, a lot of different pieces to the puzzle here in terms of all the settings on this thing. Obviously, I'm not on a Wi-Fi network because I'm out in a baseball diamond. Um, but I'm going to just go with the default settings on this for now and take it up in the air and see what happens. So let's go back to here. Nope, now it's asking me to log into my DJI account again, which is kind of a pain. But let me try this real quick. I will say one thing about this screen, you have to touch a little bit higher than you think you need to. Otherwise you end up, um, you end up hitting the button below. It, it, the, the touch on it, I don't know if it's adjustable or not. Okay, so it's telling me that uh, I can't sign in because there's no network available. So that's okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and fly, um, gonna go ahead and fly it anyway. So I'm gonna hit the go fly button here. And you can see it says latest, maybe you can or can't see, but um, if you can't see, it says latest firmware. So everything else looks normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I've got a camera view. I'm seeing the camera, I'm gonna tilt it up a little bit. It does come with a 16 gigabyte uh, micro SD card in it. So I believe that is actually ready to go. I can't imagine there's anything on it. Uh, just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and format it. So. See. Format SD, okay. So the format is, is set. Going back to video, I'm just gonna run in full auto on the video for the moment, just to see what that's like. It defaults to 4K 30. I'm gonna go ahead and change that over real quick to uh, 1080 60, just because that's what I'm shooting with the other cameras, so they'll all match. So, Switching over to 1080 and switching over to 60 frames per second. Okay, so now I'm set at 1080 60 on the camera and I'm going to start recording. Go ahead and uh, fire it up. I'm getting a lot of beeping here. I think that might be because um, might be because of how close it was to us. It was sensing that we were uh, we were here, and it let's back it up and see if those rear sensors are picking us up. Yep, those are the rear sensors. So you hear that beeping? That's it, uh, saying, "Hey, I'm going to hit something." And it must be set for uh, pretty far away because it was about 12 feet away when that started happening. I'll fly it over towards uh, one of those signs. You'll be able to see the, uh, should, it should uh, start beeping in a second and stop. Yep, there's the front sensor and it has stopped, braking now, return stick to midpoint. I'm going to back it away. Now I think a lot of the controls on this thing are the same. It's got the uh, buttons on the top for photo and video. It's got the ability to run the exposure up and down um, with this top left button, although because it's in full auto, I don't think it's letting me do that. 
you've got your camera tilt over here on the left, so I'm tilting the camera down, and now I'm tilting the camera back up, and uh, return to home is in the same spot. So if you're already familiar with the DJI setup, um, it's a very similar one, almost exactly the same. I'm gonna take it up a little ways. But again, um, you know, with the new DJI Go app, if you wanna focus on something close, you have to tap that close thing, or if you wanna focus on something far away, you have to tap something far away. So it is, it gives you a nice little beep when you do that, which is a nice response to tell you, hey, I'm focusing on that. It says large wind velocity, fly with caution on the screen. So that'll give you some sense of the wind, um, how much those flags are flying right now. And uh, I've been up in the air for a few minutes now. I didn't set a timer, but um, I can tell you that uh, I've still got 81% battery, which feels like it's pretty good for as long as we've been flying. Um, all right, now I'm gonna bring it back home. There's that beep again, because it's uh, it sees me. I'm gonna stop the camera. Bring it in for a landing. Now I am curious to see if, if it lands the same way that the uh, Mavic lands, which is when you bring it down, it actually senses the ground, stops, and then lands itself. And I can tell you the answer to that is no. It just kept right on going. The Mavic stops before you land it. That might be a setting I could change, I don't know but by default, it just goes right down to the ground, whereas the Mavic stops about two feet off the ground and goes, then goes down from there. All right, so we did some flying with this thing, and let me tell you, it is pretty awesome. It is extremely stable. It is um, the, the automatic flight modes when you go into uh, orbit and follow, they are rock solid. Um, compared to the Phantom 4, it's definitely a lot more uh, stable with regard to GPS and holding in one place crazy fast with the um, with the sport mode going and uh, aside from a couple of issues that we had early on which was when we set up um, I did notice that there were some Chinese letters that kept popping up when I was trying to register at the DJI Go um, through the DJI Go app uh, I picked English but it kept popping up in Chinese so if that happens to you don't get frustrated just um, once you get it registered and you reset it it, it corrected itself um, it did come for me with the latest firmware, but be sure as you set it up, you uh, check the firmware, update it if necessary, and uh, charge the batteries 100%. We're gonna do some exhaustive testing on it compared to the Phantom 4. Um, also might compare it to the Mavic, some flight time tests, speed tests, etc. So definitely stay tuned for Ready, Set, Drone. Hope you like this. If you do, hit the like button. And if you really like it, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.